is still Apostle Stacy Woods, and you're still watching Dimensions and Stacy. I told you guys I was going to be pumping out videos today, so I'm here in the office and trying to get some work done. I don't know how much I'm going to get done with this laptop computer shutting down on me just a few seconds ago, right when I was recording the videos about the Grammy Awards, but we're going to pray that this thing turns back on. Um, that I, I hope it just got overheated and it shut off, but... That's never happened that I can recall that it just shut off. So you guys pray or somebody send me a computer or something, honey. I'm just saying. But anyway, um, I'm here now and I want to encourage those of you guys who, um, like me, you've been saved for a while. You've been in the Lord for a while. Uh, you may have been in ministry for a while or might have had dreams. You may be a little bit older now. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be clear in what I'm saying. I remember as a young lady um, saved and enjoying the Lord and called into the ministry full of hope, full of dream, full of vision, excited about what God was going to do, prophetic words spoken over my life that I was going to do this and I was going to go there and preach to the nations and preach before the multitudes, before thousands of people and um, amen that God was going to take care of me, that I would want for nothing and that I was going to be married and have children, I'm still waiting on that one, praise God and you know, I had all of these promises that were spoken over my life that I was going to write books and that um, God was just going to do so many things through my life and my ministry. Um, and then I began to step out on faith and do those things that God had shown me through dreams and visions and through the prophetic word and even through messages and being inspired by those who were on television and preaching and looking looking into the screen and saying, you know, one day I'm going to do that. One day I'm going to preach like that. One day I'm going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. And one day the Lord's going to use me to do that. And, you know, I began to um, seek for help, for mentoring, for someone to guide me uh, in that direction that God had set, me, uh, set for me to go. And I really opened up my heart and I gave God a real yes. I said, Lord, yes to your will, yes to your way. I was 14 years old. I said, God, whatever you have planned for my life, my answer to your will, Lord, is yes. I'm going to warn you, this, this video is about to get real. Okay, y'all ready to ride with me? Okay. Um, then after that, shortly after that, I began to witness and I began to really uh, experience the church, mm. the church, not the hand clapping, foot stomping, tongue talking, wonderful church that we all love, but I began to experience persecution from within those who were maybe envious. Who is this little girl? Who does she think she is? That she can outdo me. She just got in the ministry. I began to experience being overlooked, began to experience being uh, uh, ridiculed. Uh, they began to say, well, who do you think you are that, um, that God's going to use you? you? You're so young, you, you know, you're a woman. Um, your father is not a bishop. Your mother is not a missionary. So who are you that you can preach the gospel? So a lot of doors uh, God had to open for me himself because many people began to close doors and say, oh, mm -mm, we don't know her. We ain't going to let her in here. Who she thinks she is? She thinks she's somebody. And this is so strange because that was that came after I had gotten over my fear, gotten over being timid because believe it or not, I was very afraid very timid, didn't want to preach. Oh, I would sing anything, anytime, anywhere, but preach? That's not something that was my idea of a good time. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. I didn't. But after I surrendered to God and realized that, yes, it was his will and his desire for my life, and I began to put away those childish things. I grew up real fast. Told my boyfriends, bye-bye. Told many of my friends, I can't hang out anymore. I can't do that. You know, I never went to a club. I never smoked or drank or well, gotten drunk. I, even when I tried to take little sips, come on, 
It didn't even work because I would hear the voice of God saying, I'm calling you. Mm. And once I began to believe God and step out in faith, that's when the church folk started saying, well, who she thinks she is? <laughs> My God, it took boldness at 14 to stand in front of people who were more than twice your age and preach the word. And then God didn't give me the cute little messages. He didn't give me stuff like Mary had a little lamb and, you know, and then, no, he gave me stuff like God showed me a vision. And in that vision, I saw this, I saw that. And he said, repent. He said, he's not pleased with that. He said, he's soon to come. He said, get right. Okay. And here's this little girl who can't even barely put, you know, uh, um, two cents together. Is standing in the pulpit telling somebody about their sins. How dare she? How dare she? And the bonus that I came that I got came because I had to stand up. I had to grow up. And I had to say, if God called me to do this, I can't be a punk about it. I can't be shy about it. The little girl is over. It's just time for me to go on and grow up. And let God use me for his glory. And that's exactly what I began to do. And God began to open doors for me to travel all across the country. Without me having to pass my business card to this person and that person. Without me having to sleep my way to the top. It's the truth. Because some people do. Mm -hmm. Without me having to pay my way to get through the doors. Without me having a big name person opening up the doors for me and laying the platform for me and saying, oh, oh, this is uh, my daughter and I'm going to present you guys. Uh, I'm going to present her to you and I'm going to let her come on um, TBN with me and here she is. But out of all of that, God still made a way for me to do great things in his name and I give him glory. But after I reached a certain place, after I went from being minister to evangelist to prophetess and then to apostle, hmm, there came the how dare you's again. How dare you be an apostle before you reach the age of 30? How dare you think that you can open up a church without any money and any support? How dare you think you can uh, establish churches and you're a woman? Who are you? How dare you think that you can um, convince people that um, the ways that they've been living is wrong and you ain't even been living as long as it? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you this? How dare you that? How dare you come on YouTube and let people into your life and give them a glimpse of what real ministry is? How dare you? How dare you? I began to hear that constantly. And for a moment... I believed that. Hmm. For a moment, when I would close my eyes, you know, right in that moment before you drift off to sleep, and that moment when you're awake and you're kind of in between, yeah, that moment, I begin to say, well, maybe I am reaching too far. Maybe I am being too ambitious. Maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe I don't have any business thinking that I can survive of just doing ministry. Maybe they are right. Maybe maybe I should slow down and take a moment and just be Stacy. Maybe I should go out on a few more dates and just kind of leave this preaching alone and just kind of, you know, I, I, I won't resign, but maybe I'll just take a break. Maybe I'll just be regular, whatever that is, for a moment. Maybe they're right. Maybe I don't need to um, go as much as I'm going. Maybe all the money that I'm putting into websites and flyers and business cards and robes and conferences and uh, giving my whole check to do revivals. and may Maybe they're right. Maybe I don't have any business doing that. And those are the things that I will wrestle with in my mind as I begin to See my friends get married, have children, have businesses, and be successful. And here I am, a preacher, still struggling. Y'all better let me tell the truth on here. 
looking good, but wondering, God, how are the bills going to get paid at the church? Okay, which bill I'm going to pay? Am I going to pay the rent or am I going to pay the light bill at the church? Am I going to help sister so-and-so or am I going to um, pay my car note? Am I, mm, no help, okay? Not very many supporters, but yet taking the hits, being called everything but a child of God, a Jezebel and a, uh, oh my God, uh, Delilah, and even folk on the internet starting rumors and lies when you're doing everything you can to live right. Not trying to manipulate God's people, not trying to twist the gospel, not trying to even preach for profit, but just want to be obedient to the word of God. I almost believe them. I almost believe them when they said, oh, you can't be a preacher and be prosperous. I almost believe them when they said you couldn't be a, a true prophet of God and, 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 and still, you know, be relevant to this. I almost believe them when they told me you shouldn't have, you shouldn't turn on the camera and do videos. You got folk all in your home. You know, preachers ain't supposed to do that. I almost believe them. When they said, maybe you should just be quiet. You know, sometimes when what you say just comes out too strong. You know, maybe you just just let people live their life. Don't 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 say nothing about the fact that they're in sin and the fact that God is not pleased and the fact that they are in these lifestyles and don't say nothing about it. Don't take a stand for holiness. Just let folk do what they want to do. Just let folk live what they want to live and just don't worry about it. You know, just you know what you have preached long enough. It's been twenty years, so why don't you just go and just get you um the house and go on and get married and get the children that you want just go on and do what you want to do because after all for more than half your life you've done everything god told you to do and where has it gotten you that's what the devil said and i almost believed him and i thank god for shaking me back to attention i thank god for allowing me to come back to my right mind. And I thank God that I gave him another yes. And so, no, it's not guaranteed that I'll be married, that I'll live in a mansion. It's not guaranteed that my ministry is going to reach the thousands or the tens of thousands or the millions. It's not. But for the one person that I can help as I travel along, for the one person that says, you know what, you blessed me. And now I have hope. And now I think I'm going to say yes to God too. For the few of you out there who have been blessed, who have been encouraged, for those of you all hmm, <laughs> who have been uh, in any way impacted by what God has called me to do, I want to say thanks be to God that I didn't listen to the people, that I didn't listen to the enemy. And that now I can say it was all worth it. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. This message is to those of you all who attempted to believe what the enemy was saying to you through people, through situations, through the crowd. I want you to know that it is worth it. It's worth it. Keep on giving God your yes. There is value in living a holy life. Keep on telling God yes. Keep on doing what you're doing for the ministry. Keep sacrificing. Keep giving. Keep loving God's people. Most of all, keep loving God. Amen. Hope you've been blessed by my moment of transparency. Enjoy Jesus and all his joys. Thanks for making ministry possible. And please, whatever you do, don't listen. Not to them.